Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about magma formation. Okay, so what are the conditions required for formation of magma? So we have a couple of requirements in order for magma to form. So magma can be formed either by melting of Earth's crust or by melting within the mantle. Okay, crust and mantle are almost entirely solid, indicating that magma only forms in special places where pre-existing solid rocks undergo melting. So we have three special conditions. First is the temperature. Next, we have the pressure. And lastly, we have the volatiles. So we will discuss them one by one. Let's go. So first, melting due to decrease in pressure. And this is also called as decompression melt. So the decrease in pressure affecting a hot mantle rock, constant temperature permits melting, which in turn forms magma. Okay. Now the question is, why does decompression induce melting of rocks? So remember, in order to melt a rock, bonds between the particles should be broken. So under intense pressure, it's still not possible, even when the temperature is high. When pressure is decreased, because the bonds between the particles can be broken down. And because of this, the particles move farther away from each other. Okay? Now let's have the melting resulting from heat transfer from rising magma. So basically, it's heat transfer melting. This is also called as heat transfer melt. So a rising magma from the mantle brings heat with it and transfer heat to their surrounding rocks at shallower depths which may melt. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, so heat from rising magma melts the crust. The volcano erupts. This is called the rhyolitic melt. Okay, so when basalt magma pulls at the base of the crust, basalt volcano erupts. So where does magma form? The first one is in mid-ocean ridge. The rising magma in mantle convection cell brings heat to the surface, transferring heat to the overlying rocks. So at the same time, the hot rising mantle rocks experience decompression melting. Okay, so it is important to remember that the transfer of heat is accompanied by a decrease in pressure, or what we all know as decompression associated with the spreading of the lithospheric plates. Okay, so these two work in tandem in promoting the partial melting of rocks along the spreading center. Okay, so it looks like this. Next, we have the mantle plump or the hot spots. So like mid-oceanic ridges, the transfer of heat and decompression result to magma generation. The source of heat for mantle plumps is much deeper. Mantle plums look like this, you know, the head and the tail. So lastly, we have the subduction zones. Oceanic crustal rocks are formed along spreading center, typically beneath several kilometers of seawater. So if you look at the figure, it's the oceanic crust going to the mantle, you have the subduction zone. Okay. So the presence of water during generation results to the formation of Hydrous minerals. In chemistry, when we say it's hydrous, it has water. Okay, so as the oceanic slab is down thrusted along the subduction zone, the change in temperature and pressure conditions brings about mineral instability and the release of water to the surrounding hot rocks. It never ends well for me in my mental state. So, 